Now, whenever I get my hands on a brand new wavetable synthesizer, which is not that often, but when I do, the first thing I want to do is to audition the wavetables, hear what they sound like, hear what the potential is for them. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video. Now, auditioning a wavetable means setting up a very simple modulation, either an LFO or an envelope to scan through that wavetable. Try going from front to back, from back to front, do it slowly, do it quickly, to try and get an idea of the kinds of sounds that the wavetable is capable of producing. Now, in this video, all I'm doing is scanning through each wavetable in turn very, very slowly, front to back, back to front. I'm basically using a looped envelope to do this. Now the wavetables that I'm choosing to play here are a very small selection from a set of wavetables which Groove Synthesis have provided specifically for the third wave synth. There are 48 of them in total. They are very high resolution, high definition, anti-aliased waveforms. They really do sound absolutely wonderful. So we've got 48 to choose from and here I'm just going to play you uh, just a handful basically. So remember, with every sound that I'm playing in this video, we're listening to just one single oscillator, slowly scanning backwards and forwards through a wavetable. There's no filtration, no fancy modulations. I've added a little bit of delay and some reverb, and a tiny little bit of delayed vibrato, which kicks in after about one second of holding down a note. But other than that, it's just one single oscillator.
So you'll hear me concentrating on ambient sounds, ambient pads and textures and that kind of thing. Uh, don't get me wrong, the synthesizer is capable of so much more than this, but for me personally, that's where I think wavetable synthesis really does excel. Those kind of slow moving, evolving, complex sounds that you can get out of wavetables, especially if you start to combine them, which is something I'm not doing here in this video. Much more so than simple sample playback, wavetables can really change their sonic character immensely if you play them at different octave ranges. Now there's no denying that the third wave is an expensive synthesizer, but let's try and get that in perspective. And to do that, I'm gonna compare it against the most powerful and capable analog polysynth that I've ever played, which is the Moog One. Now I'm not suggesting that these synthesizers are competitors, that you should choose one over the other. They're very different instruments, but let's just look at the capabilities of these two synthesizers side by side. First, the Moog One. We have 16 voices of polyphony we have three-part multi-timbrality. So we've got three completely separate synth engines inside the Moog One. Now, each voice in a Moog One has got three oscillators, two filters, that's a low-pass filter and a state variable filter, four LFOs and three envelope generators. Massive modulation capabilities with the Moog One and a very, very comprehensive modulation matrix. Now, let's compare that to the third wave. It's a hybrid synthesizer. It is digital and analog together. We have 24 voices of polyphony. We have four part multi-timbrality. We have three oscillators per voice like the Moog One, and we have two filters per voice like the Moog One. And again, low pass filter and state variable filter. Now in terms of modulation capabilities, the third wave per voice has got four LFOs, four traditional envelope generators, plus an additional three complex six-stage wave scanning envelope generators per voice. The third wave, quite simply, is the most powerful and capable wavetable synthesizer that I've ever had the privilege of being able to play. <laughs> 